Hello, Key West, and hello, Sydney, Australia. Hello, New Guinea. Hello, Papua New Guinea, specifically. Uh, Beijing, China, Tokyo, Japan, Jakarta, Indonesia, Delhi, India, Crete, Greece, uh, Santorini, Greece, Athens, Greece, into Italy, Novara, Milan, Rome, uh, into France, Paris, and Chamonix, into England, London, and in South America, Brazil, Venezuela, and Argentina, and just about in every state in the United States. I say hello, hello, hello. This is Louis Patron bringing you the Key West Lou Legal Hour. You may wonder why I go through this whole litany every week of all these countries. Well, the reason is simple. I am telling you that 35 people in 35 to 40 countries are watching this show. Yep, they're watching this show. Uh, how did this all come about? I started doing a blog here in Key West seven years ago. It's called Key West Lou. Uh, and you, just, you can go on the internet any day and find it. KeyWestLou.com. And all I do is tell people about what I did the day before. Well, over the course of seven years, I have a huge following on this blog. And those people from, and I know in specific countries, are watching the show also in addition to reading, reading the blog. The people in Papua. In Jakarta, there's eight or ten uh, middle-aged women, 40-ish, you know, uh, all Catholics, even though it's a Muslim country, largest Muslim country in the world, that get together and they party. I call them my groupies to watch this show. Right now in Camoli, Italy, on the Italian Riviera next to Portofino, I know two Italian women who are having a cup of tea or a little coffee and some cookies and watching this show. I know that uh, in Crete, Greece, Jimmy Brown and his friends are watching this show. So that's why I say it, because I want to say hello to all of them. All right. Good show today. Uh, terrific week. Let's start with the inauguration. The inauguration, Obama's second inauguration, was the finest I have seen other than John Kennedy's in 1960. Absolutely terrific. I thought it was beautiful. It was a moving moment, the inauguration. Uh, I shed a tear or two. Maybe I'm an emotional guy, but just the whole ambiance of the thing. I mean, the music, the appearance, the flags, all those people, almost a million people standing out there in front of the bandstand. Uh, it just was very moving. That's all I can tell you. And his words were, I didn't think it was the greatest speech that's been made. Uh, it isn't a, like Kennedy's, ask not what you can do for your country, uh, but what you can do for you. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. It was not that kind of speech. It wasn't FDRs, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Uh, it just, but it was a good speech. So all in all, I enjoyed it. I thought it was terrific for America. And then, by accident, I happened to switch on Fox News. I don't watch Fox News, Fox News very often. And there they are, about an hour after the inauguration. And I didn't know if we had seen or watched the same inauguration. Uh, they didn't like Michelle Obama's hair. They did not like her coat. Uh, they didn't like the way the kids were dressed. They did not care for how the, the children behaved while they were sitting there watching portions of the parade. They didn't like the, the president's speech. They took every word, not sentence or phrase, every word of the president and dissected it. They cut it up. And why do this? If something's good, say it's good. If it sucks, say it sucks, but don't do that. So it was a great inauguration. It, I, I was, it was a, I'm happy to be an American type day, which we need. Now, Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton had a hell of a day this week. She went before the congressional committees who wanted to know what she knew and when about Benghazi. Let me tell you something. It was Hillary's day. I was proud of her. I did not think Hillary Clinton was qualified to be president of the United States. And I did not support her four years ago. I will tell you this, uh, I think she's grown in the job. Uh, Secretary of State has made her grow in that job, which I think qualifies her now for the presidency in addition to all her previous experiences. 
and watching her, the way she handled these arrogant ass senators and congressmen, told me she can handle uh, the rest of the politicians she's got to deal with if she's in the White House. She did a complimentary job. I thought uh, the Republicans who went after her butt, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Uh, they're trying to make political fodder. I don't know when people are going to realize, these elected people, that we need to get things done, not to pick on each other. Because I thought they were doing a terrible job trying to screw her up. And she just, not only did she give what she got, she gave better than what she got. Now let's talk about filibuster. Filibuster is in the Senate, and if something comes up that a senator doesn't like, under the old rules, that senator would stand up, and he could talk for days. And as long as he talked, there could be no vote on that bill. And this went on. They used to go six, seven days, these guys. They stay up 24 hours, because once they sat down or gave up the floor and let someone else speak, they lost their right to continue the filibuster. And the filibuster meant nothing. They used to read the dictionary word by word, starting with the A's, and read the definitions, or, or read books. They just had to keep speaking was the rule. Eventually, if their position was sound, the people of the country would understand it. If it wasn't sound, the people of the country would understand it. No, these guys were asses and get the hell out of there and let's do the job properly. Now we had these new filibuster rules uh, in the past few years where the Republican minority, all they had to do was say, I I'm going to filibuster, and they didn't filibuster, and the bill just didn't move forward. Doesn't make sense. But that's the way it works, so they could avoid all those two or three days of somebody standing up and looking like a fool. Uh, the Republicans now control the United, the Democrats rather, control the United States Senate on the first day uh, of the new Senate uh, term. They can change the rules. That, and they can do it by majority vote. Well, there's 53 votes the Democrats have in the Senate. They only need 51. And they were supposed to change the filibuster so that the Republicans couldn't control the flow of legislation that came to the Senate and went out of the Senate as passed. Because we couldn't get bills passed. Whatever the president wanted, he couldn't get passed in the Senate. Uh, and Reed, the majority leader, was supposed to change things and screw the Republicans. We're going to do it this way. No more filibuster. Well, he didn't do it. I'm sad to say it was announced yesterday that he and McConnell, the Republican leader, got together and they came to a decision. They would fine-tune it a bit, but not eliminate what had been going on totally. And this is what I've got to say, typical of the Democrats. They had the Republicans down. They didn't step on their, stomp on their heads and take advantage. Whereas the Republicans, when they got you, they keep you down. They don't give you a chance to breathe. And the Democratic Party's got to learn that. You cannot negotiate with someone who will not negotiate with you. The Republicans always do what they want, take advantage. The Democrats try to be nice guys. Screw it. You got them down, stand on their head, keep them down. Now, we're not going to get some legislation we deserve this year because this half-assed new filibuster is going to screw up the process of Obama's legislation. Stay with me. I'll be back following station break.